when I am speaking light language, it's I'm speaking a frequency. I'm not. Um, a lot of people say, you know, like when they're speaking light language, that they're channeling certain beings or certain star systems or or different things. Um, I don't ever see things that way. It's always it's a frequency. I'm just speaking a frequency. Mm. And so a lot of times you'll hear, like if you look up light language on the internet, you a lot of stuff you read about is that um, light language can come from different uh, galactic or, or star family systems. Uh, it can come from different elementals of the earth. It can come and be an angelic language, uh, ancient languages of the earth that are no longer spoken, you know, things like that. And for for me, the re- we categorize things like that because as a human in the human form we have we name things the Mm -hmm. this this frequency where where i remember being frequency and so frequency doesn't have necessarily words The opinions expressed on Broaderlands podcasts are those of the guest speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of the host or Broaderlands podcast. Robin, welcome to Broaderlands podcast. It's an honor to have you on. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. I'm excited to have you on um, Light Language. Uh, I, I want to know more about that. I, I love learning from people and I think uh, you're a fascinating human being and soul. So I, I would love for you to touch on that. But before we get started, maybe you could share a little bit about who you are and kind of the work that you do briefly, if you don't mind. Okay. So I um, am a light language channel, light code activators is kind of the what I, how I describe myself. Um, so I grew up actually in northeastern Montana and... <laughs> The, yeah, <laughs> up in the, Great Plain, in the Great Plains, very windy, very cold. So, but my story is a little bit interesting just because I, um, and this is a, a newer awareness for myself, but I, when I was seven, well, when I was 16, I was, um, got into like anorexia and I have this period of about six months or so where I have no memories. And, and I have very little memories of childhood as well. And when I was sharing this with a friend recently, and then I was talking about, then when I was 17, I got in this really bad car accident where I should have died. And, um, but I, but I didn't, I just walked out of the, out of the car and she was like, you sound like a walk-in. And I didn't understand. I didn't know what that was. I'd never heard that term before. And so I, um, was looking it up and researching it a little bit and I'm like, oh, okay, this does, this does make sense because a walk-in experiences when there's a, um, for me, it was an aspect of myself came in at birth and um, my, the two as, soul aspects or fractal parts of self had had an agreement where one would come in and do that like birth to 17 years for what it's, for to experience what needed to be experienced to then gather the information I needed to, to move forward. And then when I was 17, the uh, uh, different aspect of self came in. And it's what happened is I was in a car accident. My vehicle flipped over several times. And when it stopped, I remember just kind of getting up and and looking around, really confused. You know, of course, I was in the the accident. But um, I climbed out of the window. And the only thing that I had was I had a cut knee, just a scraped knee from the glass in the window. And my back was sore the muscles were sore but I remember looking up and I was walking around and it's like oh wow this is so cool and I'm like that's a really bizarre experience for rolling my pickup you know I several times and having a flat 
you know, the, it was pretty flattened and stuff. And then coming out and thinking, oh, this is so cool. But I was looking up at the sky and I thought it was the coolest thing that I was here on this earth. And I'm like, that was uh, throughout my life. I'm like, that's really weird. And then I don't really have memories of childhood. You know, there's different traumatic things that happen in childhood, but there was there was no um, they never affected me. I guess is is the best way to describe it. And I really don't have memory. It wasn't like there was, it wasn't like I had trauma that I had to work through. And which is a common experience for somebody who's who's a walk-in is, is that it's because it, that wasn't my life. It was like my life started at 17. But it was at that time that then um, spiritually things really started to shift for me. And so um, right after that accident, about a year after that accident, um, I started getting into more of like Christianity and which was very new for me. It's very different than how I was raised. And so then I went, um, I was in church as in a Pentecostal church and they're doing this service called baptism of fire. And they're just in, in that they say that gifts from the spirit come down. And a lot of times it's, um, they call it speaking in tongues. And that's when I began speaking in tongues was when I was 20. And I and it was very interesting because when I started speaking, I'm like, um, I'm like, oh, wow, this this like religion, this concept of, uh, you know, what they were teaching. They really don't understand who Jesus is and they don't understand what light language is. I didn't call it light language at that time or speaking in tongues. They didn't. I'm like, there's, they're missing something really big here. And so then I just started to use, um, speak in, in tongues in my prayer and meditation time. And in my 30s, I went through this period where it was like, I don't believe in anything. Um, and just kind of that, I think a lot of people kind of go through that where, you know, just what do I believe in or do I believe in anything? And then in my 40s, I started back into like meditation. And it's when I went back and got my master's degree in social work. And I started, I had a self, um, a teacher that taught self, self-care basically is what the class was, you know, to take care of yourself so you could do your work. And <laughs> um, so she but anyway, she would do a lot of stuff with frequency music and with meditation. And so I started using that more and more. And then the light, my light language came back online. And I noticed that when I was doing therapy with people, I right after I graduated from college, I took a training called EMDR, which is an eye movement trauma type therapy for people. And when I was doing the eye movements with people, I'd begin in my head speaking light language. Mm -hmm. And they would be able to move through very significant traumas quite easily and not have that dissociative aspect like where a lot of people have when they've had severe trauma and they're trying to work through it. And so that which then just brought me into more I wanted to explore more different spirituality. So I took like a Reiki class and different things like that. And so things just developed through that way. And then um, I was working in the hospital setting in the outpatient behavioral health clinic and I began to I just, I couldn't do it anymore. It was like, um, I literally felt like there was a piece of me dying every time I went to work, like something was being grasped out of me because working in that system with a kind of going more into the spiritual background and just even being in the mental health field, working in a hospital setting really doesn't fit because they're so, um, ingrained in giving a quick fix of a pill. And so you're working with people and they're making progress and then they go to their doctor and their doctor ups their medication, which messes with the brain process and your ability to process through anything. And so I was like, I can't, I can't do this anymore. And so in, um, this was like in 2019, like the beginning of 2019, I got the very clear message that I had to quit my job, that it was time to get a divorce and we needed to sell our home. And so in January of 2020, that whole, that whole process began. I no longer had my job. 
In March, we sold their house, and in May, I was divorced. And so within about five and a half months, I had three major significant shifts in, in my life, which brought me down the path where I'm at now with working with people, speaking light language, activating light codes. But to, to back up a little bit, because I know I was talking with um, Boo Boo at the beginning, and he was talking a little bit about, you he heard about my story with Atlantis. And I want to share a little bit about that and like why I speak light language and what it is, why I'm doing what I'm doing here on this earth. And so in 2017, I, or no, it was 2018, I, it could have been 2019, I don't know. The, but anyway, I um, went to a medicine drum workshop and made a medicine drum. And so then I started using it um, for personal use, and I was just drumming on it with for a journey. I was just going into a journey, and I was just in my living room, and I was kind of dancing around and, and drumming, and I kept saying Aya, 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 and all of a sudden I saw this image where I was standing on a sandy beach, and I was looking into an ocean, and then I was watching something fall in, and. And I had these tablets. I was holding these tablets, like with codes written on them. And I was, and I'm like, oh, that's Atlantis going into the ocean. And it was just like, it, it wasn't like, oh no, Atlantis is falling into the ocean or, you know, or it was like Atlantis, it was like, oh, Atlantis is leaving this time space reality. It's not like they sunk um, or, you know, got destroyed or, or anything like that. There wasn't, um, you know, we, we hear a bunch of different things about Atlanta and Lumeria. And so there's there's all these different timelines. And so, yes, so people have different memories of that timeline. My memory of that timeline is, is that it was just leaving this time-space reality. And is what had happened is at the Atlanteans had called out to different star beings in different galactic systems to come down and hold codes that weren't to be um, released on humankind at that time. And so as I was standing there, I saw all these lights all over, it was like, like a globe, you know, like they were all over. I'm like, oh, those are other beings like me and mm -hmm. holding codes. And so we were, we were all holding different codes. And so I, then I had this memory of just putting the codes in me because I had made the agreement that I would stay on the earth until it was time for me to be incarnated as a human. So I stayed on the earth as a hu in human, um, not in human form, but in my light body form is the best way I can des describe it. And the, all of my memories, different memories that I have of, of that time frame is that I, uh, when people saw me, if they were to see me, I would look human, but I, but I wasn't. And then I, I have other, um, you know, when, if you've ever done like past life regression or, or different things like that, all of my memories are either where I just decide, oh, I'm going to go to the earth and I'm just kind of my spirit self, but I'm like walking around and then I just leave <laughs> or I'm the consciousness of something. And so when I came to the, when I was born here um, this was this is my first incarnation and as a part of that that's why there's the kind of the um, walk-in experiences that I've had is because different aspects of myself have been coming in to complete the fullness of what it is that I need to do and it's just the holding of the the codes and so when I speak the codes I'm just speaking out the um, codes that I'm holding that are that need to go out into Gaia, um, activating people that type, you know, and getting people to come back into their their full authentic being self. Yeah, thank you. Um, I have so many questions on light, on light language. It, it's um one of them is how is light language different from um other forms of spiritual communication, and you brought up tongues like in religion and Christianity. How is that different? Or is it the same thing? So the, 
you're going to get a different answer, I think, from you know a variety of people when you ask. So I'm just going to say from from my experience from my experiences that when I am speaking light language, it's I'm speaking a frequency. I'm not. Um, a lot of people say, you know, like when they're speaking light language, that they're channeling certain beings or certain star systems or or different things. Um, I don't ever see things that way. It's always it's a frequency. I'm just speaking a frequency. Mm. And so a lot of times you'll hear like if you look up light language on the Internet, you a lot of stuff you read about is that um, light language can come from different uh, galactic or, or star family systems uh, can come from different elementals of the earth. It can come and be an angelic language, uh, ancient languages of the earth that are no longer spoken, you know, things like that. And for, for me, the re we categorize things like that because as a human in the human form, we have, we name things. The this this frequency where where I remember being frequency, and so frequency doesn't have necessarily words, or it doesn't have categories that we don't put things. We don't say this is that and this and that's that. It just everything is just is, and so it. Um, so I have a hard time. So when I talk about like language, it's purely a frequency coming out and the, the words, you know, we call them words, um, are just a tone. They, they carry a specific frequency. When we see like light codes or the light language and, and you draw it out or you see people writing it is that it carries a specific code. It's just a, it's just a frequency. Is it okay if I cuss on here? <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I cuss well, on. <laughs> yeah. Well, because the first time I've seen Avatar, the movie, I go, mm -hmm. I, and I heard light language, even hearing you um, share and speak light language, I'm like, that's some Avatar type shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it really, do you think they were speaking light language in that movie? Yeah, I do. I'm, yeah, I do, actually. Well, I mean, because it sounds very similar. Maybe you mm -hmm. can do that. I mean, Maybe give us a small sample at the end of the sh uh, this episode. If you yeah, I'll do. A, yeah, I'll do a light language activation for you. Can anyone learn light language? We all have a, a we all have a language like a soul soul language or frequency language. So we on the if you think of the the whole universe or universes, the whole system. At, you know, it's a it's a a sacred geometry grid. It's a grid system. And we all have like an origin point on that grid system. And because of that, we all have a frequency language. So how that comes through for people is going to be different. Not everybody's necessarily going to speak it. Some people are going to be using a lot more like mudra hand movements or, or dance or art, or there'll be writing it. So it can come through in a lot of different different ways so really it's about light language is more we call it language but it's more of the expression of your frequency mm -hmm. and so so to answer your question yes we all we all speak light language and um most of us are already doing it not realizing that we're doing it and so it's so one of the things that I like to do is, is I want to bring people into the awareness of what they're doing because it needs to be a conscious. We need to be conscious of what we're what we're doing. It's time for us to um, work with the the earth as opposed to um, for like for example. Okay, so like the lunar eclipse is is coming up, and so and then we just had like the eight eight, you know, and so we have all these dates that we are like oh the, the that's an open it's a portal opening and I can manifest and I can do all this stuff it's time for us actually to be more asking 
How am I to work with you? How am I to partner with you so that the frequencies needing to come through are coming through? And so, mm -hmm. and that's with, that's with everything. And so if you look on my YouTube channel, I'll, there'll be things where I'm like um, speaking light language with the trees or with the mushrooms or, you know, whatever in nature, because it's time to assist to assist each other, it's a symbiotic relationship. It's not, it's not where often it, it almost feels more like that. And this was purposeful. I mean, there's a period where this needed to occur where we are receiving, receiving, receiving from the earth, meaning that we were using all these different portals and different things or different um, gateways or moon manifestations and all those types of things um, to to connect, but now we've connected. We've, mm -hmm. We truly have connected. We often think, oh, I haven't connected. We, we are connected, we're very connected, and it's time for us to consciously work with the, with the earth, with the elements, with um, life on this planet. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, are you familiar with the LA, um, Conscious Life Expo in LA? No. I was there last year, and it's the biggest spiritual event you can go to. Um, and, you know, there's different booths and stuff. And um, I seen someone doing light language with someone, and uh, it looked like they were throwing gang signs up. I, I grew up in the neighborhood, so that's the thing <laughs> they're doing. All. But yeah. uh, is that an expression of, from within their body? Why, why are they throwing up signs? Yeah, it is. And so, um, so like, a lot of times I'll be – when I'm speaking, I'll be doing – different things like this and it's for me is what's happening is that I'm seeing these codes and it's like I'm <laughs> writing them in the air that's and it, so it does kind of look like or it looks like you know different mudras you know like in um, Hinduism or Buddhism you know they have different mudras for different things and, and stuff and so it just it carries a, a frequency it's just a, a movement that carries a frequency and so if you think of even like if you're on your computer and you're coding something on your computer you know you're using the keys and you're going like this and mm. and stuff it's the same thing it's that's what you're doing yeah you said um many of us are using light language and we don't even realize it is there any other examples of that so um dance is a really good example mm. of that is that express expressive movement through dance um expressive song like you maybe you hear people like toning um with their voice you know some people they can tone with their voice and it almost sounds like sound or um crystal singing bowls you know and different things and so there's there's toning with the voice there's i mean there's using into when you're intuitively working with like the the singing bowls or or gongs or you know different things like that that's an expression of light language because you're sending out a very specific frequency when you're drumming that's why you know in almost i think every single indigenous culture there's drums mm -hmm. you know and drums are a very part a very big part of the the spiritual rituals and things because they send out a very specific frequency and if i don't know if you've ever um made a medicine drum or have a medicine drum but like I will be um, playing my medicine drum and it's a very specific beat to me and somebody else can take my um, medicine drum and it'll sound very different because mm. they their beat will be very different than mine and so um, you know and so it's there's there's a lot of there's that type of expression yeah, thank you. How does one, people that may be listening, they're probably wondering, like, how do we connect or become more in tune and activate our light language within ourselves? Um, are there specific practices like meditation or certain mantras or something to practice to help activate that within There's, us? So is to trust your, is to trust yourself. This is, uh, that's a, <laughs> that's the the simple the simple answer is because a lot of times 
And it does tend to come through when we're in stillness, you know, Mm -hmm. whether not just necessarily meditation, but say when you're out walking, I've had experiences where I would just be walking and then all of a sudden I'm singing something, you know, that's that I've never heard before. Um, But when we're in that stillness, when we're out of our our thinking mind, we you may notice it's more about noticing what you're what you're doing. So say that you're sitting there and you're meditating and then all of a sudden you start to notice that your hands are moving. So what most people do is that they stop doing that. They're like, what am I doing? Or they're swaying or they're moving, you know, they're, Mm -hmm. they're doing different things like that. And so they will, um, a lot of times people stop themselves from doing it when they, when sound comes out, that's the one that we really stop ourselves from doing because a lot of people are like, well, it just sounds like, you know, baby talk or gibberish or, or whatever, or that's what their, you know, their thinking mind gets in the way and, and then it shuts, shuts that off. And so there isn't, um, there, there isn't like a s- specific thing. It's more about, allowing yourself to be still and trust your intuition and just Mm. have that intention of, I'm just going to let flow whatever needs to flow. And so um, a lot of times is what has happened with me is that I'll be speaking light language and people are just spontaneously activated. They begin speaking and it's almost more like, It's not necessarily, it it could be the frequency that I'm I'm putting out and it just goes into their system and Mm -hmm. opens them up. And, but I think the other aspect of it that's just as important is that they're hearing me speak it and it gives them permission to -hmm. do it as well. Because a lot of times when people, when that happens with people, they're like, oh, I remember when I was little or I remember when I was 16 or I remember you know doing that and then they but they shut it off and so it wasn't like their first time doing it it was just that um it's almost like oh I have permission now to be able to to speak yeah thank you I know Rumi once said silence is the language of God everything Mm -hmm. else is a poor translation yeah (laughs) um how would you define or inner, what's your understanding of what people call God or the source? That's, um, oh, so we, we are, so we are all and we are one at the same time. It, it's, That is such a hard question. I I never know how to answer it because because we all are are God, you know. And so it's it yeah. so it's like it's like well, looking at you, you know, is and, and I am you, you are me, type of thing. And it's hard. It's I think it's so hard to truly answer that question or to because it's hard to stay in that space that. Um, that we're, we're all one and, and we're all also individual because, because we're, because we're frequency and we all have a very specific frequency that we're operating on. And so in order to, to create the harmony, the oneness is that we stay within our free, we stay in our frequency bandwidth. And when I'm in my frequency and you're in your frequency, they flow together. But if mm. I try to come down, I'm not saying down like I'm going like your frequency is lower. But I'm just if, if I try to come into it, that's a better word. If I'm trying to come into your frequency, then it causes disruption. It causes disharmony because um, it's it's like um, if you're playing playing an instrument and uh, and you okay. So like if you're in a orchestra and the strings are playing and then somebody has the cymbals and they go too soon (laughs) you know and it totally messes up the whole everything you know it makes it sound funny that's going in because they went into somebody else's frequency they went into the frequency of the strings when they needed to stay within in their frequency so 
so to I mean to answer so to answer your question is the way I view God is that there's this frequency system and we're all part of that frequency system and the the system works flawlessly when we're all staying in our frequency <laughs> And so that that's that authentic self. That's being in the authentic self. Know that frequency, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you said you grew up in a, a you you went to the church. Uh, how do you view that nowadays? Where you're at? Uh, how do you look at um, religion versus spirituality? Is there a difference, or it's the same thing? But what's your what's your point of view on everything now? Looking back at what you were taught early on. So. Let's see. Sorry, I asked you like four questions. No, no, I'm just trying to articulate how to answer this because it's, it's, um, there really isn't a difference between spirituality and religion any longer. Okay, so religion is, you know, religion is where there's a construct and this, and these are the rules you have to play by. Um, Spirituality has become that as well mm. and has become that aspect of where there's these certain certain rules that we have to abide by. And there's these certain steps that you have to go through in order to get to a certain place. Um, and and it's there the, even in the spirit, the spiritual world, there's where people are like, you have to do it. You have to do it this way. It's coming less and less that way you know more people are, are you know it it got to a point where it was like um i i just heard this recently actually somebody was telling me that she was talking about um something that i was doing with, with one of her friends and one of her friends actually said um basically she didn't say you're wrong but she said the only thing you ever need to do is reiki that's all you ever need to do. There's nothing other than that. That's all you. And so, so there's that type of mentality out there, unfortunately, or where, you know, in the 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s, um, there was, you know, the guru, everybody had to follow mm -hmm. a guru. You, you couldn't think for yourself and you had to follow somebody else. And that's, that was the same thing as me growing up Catholic. It's like I had to go to a priest to confess my sins that I had to make up because I, you know, <laughs> when I was a little kid, it's like, I don't know what I did wrong, you know what I mean, <laughs> and stuff. And, and then why am I going to this person and saying, um, please forgive, you know, all that kind of stuff. But there was a, it's, but it, what, the same thing started to happen in, in the spiritual realm as well. Mm. And that's why, like, kind of going back to the point of the light language, why people aren't coming fully into their light language is because basically you're told that you're not like oh, for I, I still hear this where people are like, well, what if you are channeling something dark or evil, <laughs> you know, and stuff. And I'm like, it, which is really confusing for me. I mean, it literally really does confuse me. And I'm like, but there is no there is no darkness. I mean, there, there has to be darkness to, to be light, but one isn't, they're not, it's not a duality thing. They're, they're working together. They have to work together. One has to be present in order for the other one to be present and vice versa. And the, you know, the, all the different information, like there's um, all the, this warfare and, you know, spiritual warfare going on and all that, that stuff is, doesn't make sense to me because we're all actually doing exactly what we're supposed to be doing to to assist so like we're on earth right now so we're talking about assisting the earth to to do what she needs to do but we're all actually doing that um even if somebody else looks like it's um, we call it evil that had to occur in order for mm for the the opposite to to have effect and so i'm i'm going to give a personal um example 
And this has to do with like not remembering much of my childhood. And so um, I do know that there was molestation in, in my childhood. And one, so I was doing a, a session or not a session. There's a group of us together and we were just kind of um, doing different energy work and things together. And somebody said, one of them said to me, there's some keys that you're holding that you no longer need. And, um, and I knew exactly what she was talking about. And then there was a couple other people in that same group. They were like, oh, I know what it is. And, and they automatically went, went to, um, it's because I, you know, we go to, well, you haven't dealt with your trauma or you have, you know, we always, there, there's always something broken with everybody is what we don't understand is that we're not broken. We're whole pretending like we're, we're these weird humans coming here, pretending like we're broken and we're not broken. And so everything's an issue, you know? And so, but anyway, so she was, and I'm like, okay, I, I wasn't really able to articulate it in the moment. So I, when I left that session, that session that we were all doing together, I was like, okay, so what is this? And it's what it is, is so, because she's like, there's keys in your, in your root and your sacral chakra that you no longer need. And, and I'm like, oh, I know exactly what it is. So when, when I came here as a little kid, you know, I, I was holding these codes as a, as a little kid too. And as a, as a child, it would be easy just to be speaking. You know, we don't have that filter. We, we remember a lot more, but I had to hold the codes until it was time to bring them forth. And so I don't know if you've in, um, there's a, there's a breathing practice where in yoga, where you do like a root lock and a throat lock, mm. you kind of, you know, lock the, lock the breath in. And so it is what it was. So when, when somebody is molested or has some sort of sexual trauma, the, the root chakra does close up and the sacral chakra closes, closes up. Okay. There's that lock there. And, um, but I had to hold those codes until it was time. And so as a little kid, having that experience actually helped me to lock in those codes until it was time for me to bring them forth. And so I don't know if you've, there's a book called, um, it's a kid, children's book, um, The Little Soul in the Sun, I think it's called, or something like that. But he's talking about... Um, when you're what before you come into human form, you're like, Oh, I want to have this experience and this experience and this experience. And this is what I need to do. And some of those experiences in order to have them, what we call as evil ha will need occur. And so the other soul comes and says, I will, I will help you have this experience, but I need you to remember that I am the light too. Hmm. And so that, so when we're talking about, when we're saying, um, you know, I hear people saying things a lot like, oh, they're just not in my frequency. Oh, like I'm, I'm, my frequency is so high and you know, their, their frequency is just too low or he, you hear all this, there's all this different stuff. And it's like, but if they weren't doing that hard, dense work of being a human, you wouldn't be able to be up here and experience up here. You know, you wouldn't be able to, you know, if I didn't have the experiences I have, I wouldn't be who I am. And, and that's, that's with everybody. And so we all came in having a very specific job to do. Mm. And so, so that's what makes us all one, but it's hard to wrap our head around it because, um, we're so indoctrinated in that it has to be this dualistic thing. And it's, it's not, it, it is, it is not. And if you keep telling yourself those stories to keep that duality, you're just going to be stuck. You're always going to be broken and you're not actually broken, but you're always going to be playing that pretend game of being broken. I love that. Uh, Yogananda has a small little book, Why God Permits Evil, but he's describing it like you did. And, you know, he talks about the, that uh, that verse in Isaiah, I, I create light, I create darkness. But he also breaks down the chalkboard 
If we had a black chalkboard, you need white chalk to see the the you know see the the chalk, see the writing. You mm-hmm. need you need that. It all plays a part. And would you say that's the reason um, we need that to for for what reason for the expansion of consciousness or for some form of growth? Um, what's it's, the whole? The purpose of it is to um, is creation is the purpose of it is Mm. so that we can create the, the way things are created is through um, what we experience as chaos. And, um, and so that's, that's really what it's for. It's for creation is for this continuous creation of the, all it is. And so if you were to look, if you um, imagine that you, so like be the observer of the observer. And so that's like mm. you're, you're looking at things from, from uh, we call it a higher perspective, but it's just from that different perspective. It's from completely outside of yourself, of this self. And um, if, if you were, or, or for example, if you were to look at it from, you know, we, we call things dimensions. If you were to look, if you're to rise up and be in like the 22nd dimension, looking down on what's happening on, on the third dimension, all you would see is a beautiful light show. Cause there's all these explosions <laughs> happening all over the place. You know, there's all this um, frequency happening all over this place. So you'd see this beautiful light <laughs> show and you'd be like, wow, look at what, uh, what, look at what they're creating. Look at that beauty they're creating. But because we are in a denser frequency, um, we experience it differently. But it's but it's actually very beautiful. Mm. And so, because it's a denser frequency, things are hitting together quicker. And so, and that's how we experience it. You know, it's it's that's why we have um, emotions and and things like that is because it's just the um, atoms of all the energy hits together quicker so um but but what's happening here is actually super beautiful and it's creating and expanding everything Mm. you can't have you can't have the 22nd i mean there's way more dimensions i mean who knows how many but you can't have (laughs) the 22nd dimension without the third dimension you can't just take a piece of the pie and say you have a whole pie still. Mm. Yeah. I love that. Who knows how many, because yeah. we don't know. I mean, Mm-mm. people can, it always makes you laugh when someone says, Oh, there's nine dimensions or there's, we don't know. <laughs> and it, and it actually doesn't matter. It, yeah, it actually doesn't. doesn't matter because it's, it's again, it's the, it's our humanness needing to try and create stories about everything. And um, rather than just allowing it, to just be. I kind of like that scripture in my father's kingdom. There's many mansions. There's many dimensions. We, mm-hmm. I don't know how many. I don't think any of right. us truly knows. Just there's many. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. I, I One time I was at a 12 step meeting and I said, oh, alcoholism is an illusion. I was talking to someone one on one before the meeting and um, someone heard me and they got all pissed off. And um, I love what you said. I've heard you say this. Um, you don't like the word healing because we're already whole. Well, it's an illusion of suffering, right? Um, created by the mind and, and, and body. But in reality, even though I'm suffering deep down inside, I am whole. I mm-hmm. am one. You know, I'm, I, I am okay. But um, my, my brain's telling me something else. It's my mind playing tricks on me, my mind and body, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but in the role of light language... Um, how does it help heal an individual and a collective? And when I use the word heal, I'm saying, how does it help us remember our wholeness? Or it, oneness? Yeah. So it's like, it goes back to the kind of the unlocking um, the mm-hmm. key codes and it's, it, uh, it's actually, so we have the two stranded carbon based DNA is, is creates our, our structure. But we also have um, crystalline DNA, and there—I mean, in um, science is actually seeing, starting to see mm. it. But we have uh, many strands. I mean, they, they've seen twelve 
strands. I think they may be, even have seen 15 so far, but we have, but they're crystalline based. They're not carbon based. And so um, a lot of times they, they used to call it junk DNA because they didn't know yeah. what it was and it didn't have a purpose. They, they said it didn't have a purpose, <laughs> but it has a, it, um, but that crystalline DNA is what holds our remembrance of who we are because truly is, because truly we're all actually frequency, which is a crystalline form of, it's just frequency. And so, so it hold, that holds all of our remembrance and being in this denser form, it's like our system has to come online and in, into our crystalline form. And so it's what light language does, or when we are kind of coding our body or listening to somebody else speak it is that we are activating our crystalline DNA. And that's what brings us back into that fullness of remembrance of who we are and, and why we're here. And so we get those little, um, like say you're in meditation and you have this like aha movement moment, or mm. you see, see something, you know, like you're being shown something. Those are, that's your um, crystalline frequency coming online. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, what I love about your story is it kind of reminds me of the Buddha when he left his household, his family and went on his mission uh, to help humanity it's kind of kind of in a, in a way it gives me it reminds me of the Buddha in many ways your story mm -hmm. how you left and felt followed your intuition for who you are today and what you do so I appreciate that it takes a lot of courage to do oh I don't know if it's courage or faith was, or whatever you want to call it it, it, <laughs> it was like I have to <laughs> You know, I think we've many of us have had that experience where it was like, where you just have to do it. It's like there's, uh, it's almost like you can't not do it. You know, there's there's something just kind of, it's like this is what you are to do. You said you were a walk-in. What, um, if you're a walk-in, what's your origins like? Where do you come from? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> I I don't. I've asked that actually I, I was um, doing a meditation and, and, and I asked that one of the, so, let, so like the guides that we, you know, we talk about, we have guides and stuff. They're actually us, you know, giving us information. <laughs> and um, so I was asking the, um, my, my, that aspect of myself. I'm like, okay, so where am I from? And it was like a masculine energy and he kept just pointing. And I'm, and I'm like, well, where, you know, where, and he's just like, and it just kept going like that. It's like, it doesn't matter. Um, mm. is, was the point is that it doesn't, it doesn't actually matter. You're from, we're all, we we all or, um, originate from somewhere. And it doesn't really matter. It's more, it's about um, being in the frequency of, of who you are. Because it's, it shifts. You know, if you think of the, the like the, even the earth, you know, with all the different, um, the ley lines and things aren't where, where the ley lines, where they say they are anymore because the earth has shifted so much. The earth has, you know, there's all these different earthquakes. So, so ley lines and all that kind of stuff is constantly shifting. And just like with the whole sacred grid system or the sacred geometry of all that is, is constantly shifting. So how can you say I'm from such and such place? Again, that's a construct that, that we use to try and make sense of things. And we don't really need to make sense of things anymore where it's time for us just to, to move intuitively with who we are. So I don't know. It, it doesn't, and it doesn't matter. So that's, <laughs> that's what <laughs> no, I appreciate that. Do you believe our, our, we're at a collective or moving into a different reality or dimension as human beings? So while we're always constantly moving into uh, a different reality. Um, like, so it goes back to the, to the frequency 
um, whatever frequency you agree to to come here on this earth, that's how you're going to experience the earth. That's how mm. you're going to experience the changes that are happening on the earth. And um, so, so yes, we're all, everybody's waking up on some aspect and it's, it's not, it's not all the same. And so we're going to experience things that are happening based on the frequency that we're in. How does um, light language like affect our DNA, um, our energetic bodies, according to like a metaphysical or spiritual perspective? So it, um, I would, you know, I've never done, you know, like where I've had any type of kind of like scientific mm. um, that, you know, where, you know, maybe somebody is watching the, the scan of the, of the body just from experience is what I can say is that people's um, thought processes shift uh, that there is a, there is an aspect of the body shifting as well, coming into a different mm-hmm. um, alignment because, because more of that crystalline energy is coming, is coming online. Um light language really is kind of like a precursor to, to like telepathy to get Mm -hmm. us to a place where, where we're just able to tune in to the frequency of the person and be able to speak to them, to each other on those frequencies. And there's, we're not, not everybody's going to be able to do it and we're not going to be able to speak to everyone necessarily that way because um, it's kind of like, uh, you know, those old uh, uh, telephone, you know, where the operators were plugging everything, <laughs> yeah, yeah. everything in. There's going to be, there's, you know, certain frequencies, just like, or certain people that we don't really want to, that we don't need to talk to. And so we're not going to be speaking on that, that frequency level, but we can tune into where we want to speak or where we want to communicate with, but really we need to come into um, activating that, the, the light language aspect, because it really has to do, because light language is about tuning into a frequency and being able to speak that frequency. When I say speak, I'm not necessarily meaning um, words, but speak that frequency. Um, But we have to trust our, we have to, fully being in, it's not even a trust. It's like, we have to be in the full knowing of self and mm. just know that we know it's not even trusting that we know it's just knowing it's just like, I just know, you know, and being in that space. And then that way you can fine tune the channels and do all kinds of, of things that they've said are impossible, you know, whether it's teleporting or moving objects, whatever it is. I'm not sure if you already explained this, um, but I'm going to ask it again because you talked about your early childhood and it was some molestation, right? And uh, uh, someone may say your your mind shut down that experience to protect yourself, right? To mm-hmm. forget that memory. But it also plays a part if you're holding these codes, right? Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Were you supposed to um, shut down to protect these codes or... What's the whole purpose of holding yeah, on to yeah, this? Yeah, oh yes, because because there was a there's a speci- there's a specific time and place where it needs to mm. um, c- be brought forth, and so it was a way of, of assisting me in just holding those codes in and not just speaking because it does you know it does um, when trauma happens regardless of what the trauma is when trauma happens a lot of time if you're not in a place where you can talk, you know, where you're encouraged to talk about it, it does lock, even locks your throat up. You know, you don't speak about it, that type of thing. But it was um, really a way for me to, to hold those, those codes in. And then when it was time for, for me to, to move, that's like when the walk-in experience happened and that's when, and then that's when, you know, the light language, you know, the throat started to open up. 
and stuff, but I didn't need, I didn't need to carry forth that human experience because it, because I received what I needed from it and it was mm. over. Now you said, uh, if we hold it in and not, not talk about it, it shuts, it, it, it gets stuck in here. Mm -hmm. uh, can that create a lot of times when I think there's important, it's important to do inner work. Um, so to release these energies, uh, can that create throat cancer later down the line by not talking about it? Do you believe? Well, I mean, it's going to, our, our body system is going to react to, um, to free, to frequency. And so, yeah, there's going to be, so of course our body, our body is part of, uh, it's not like our, our body isn't separate from our energetic self. So of course there's going to be an interplay of, of things, um, occurring and, one of the things though that was shown to me was that just like how we are coming into remembrance a lot of times we think of remembrance of, of like remembrance of of who i am who my authentic self is um, what my frequency form is you know that that type of remembrance but our physical system also comes into remembrance and so if you look at the word remember remembrance or remembering um it's the it's three it's three parts of the word so there's re which means back again and then there's member which member also means parts of the body you know like my fingers a member of my hand mm -hmm. you know type of thing and um then the ing makes it an action but so our body is literally remembering and so when we have different physical ailments, rather than looking at them like, again, like, oh, I'm broken, there's something wrong with me. It's when we start to look at it as my system is realigning, it's remembering, it's remembering how to come into its crystalline form. And so, you know, you look at people who have healed themselves from cancer. Well, a lot of them, the way they've done it is through visualization and they're visualizing almost literally like, crystal forming coming to their body and changing their their body changing or healing whatever it is when you're talking about quantum healing techniques and you know they're like working on somebody's knee and they're sending frequency into that knee and so a lot of times when we have the, those different things that are happening that we call you know that are painful or sickness or whatever actually it's just our body saying hey it's time to remember it's time to, you know, and so it's like, um, it's our opportunity to work with frequency to shift and literally bring our body into that crystalline alignment. Yeah, thank you. And you work with a lot of people with coming in with different problems or uh, circumstances or experiences that they get trapped in um, with, with trauma, for an example. Um, how, how does that help? What you do help them um, transcend their traumas or whatever they went through. Well, the the thing that I've found that has helped them help people the most is um, giving them permission to understand that they're not broken. Mm -hmm. That that doesn't defi that that doesn't define them. That they don't have to. Um, carry that story and that's that's what keeps the whatever traumatic experience or whatever our sticking points alive is that we hold, we carry that story we keep and we keep talking mm -hmm. about that story and we repeat the story and and I can't do this because of this story that I kept telling myself and so it's um, assisting them out of that out of the story that this, I don't have to tell myself the story. It's just, I, I am that I am. Mm. And it, it bring, it's bringing people back into that, that full alignment. And I mean, of course there's, you know, there's a process to, you know, we still go through the process of it for whatever reason, I guess we like to experience weird things like that. 
<laughs> rather than be like, oh, it's done. You know, so like if you look at, so this is actually how we're supposed to um, be. If you look at, um, watch like the Animal Planet channel or something, and you're watching a um, cheetah chase a gazelle. And so the cheetahs, you know, it's running super fast, chasing the gazelle. The ge gazelle runs and runs and some and gets gets away. And then the, and the, you know, the cheetah can only run for so long and gets tired. And so then the gazelle gets away. And then when you watch, the gazelle just shakes and then starts eating. Mm. That's actually what we're supposed to do. So he, the gazelle just went through a near death experience. He shook and then went about his life. He shook it off and went about his life. We're actually literally the one of the things that you can do to help yourself get out of that frequency of um, the trauma is literally shake. You can just lay on the ground and shake your body, like lay on a yoga mat or whatever, and just shake your body. You can stand and just shake. And that shaking actually realigns your central nervous system mm -hmm. and calms, calms you down. So then you can just move on. But really, that's actually how we're, we're not supposed to. We were never meant to hold traumatic experiences. We were meant to just shake it off and move on. Which dogs do that as well. They, you'll see mm -hmm. them shake. They're shaking off that energy, right? Right. Yeah. All uh, all animals. Yeah. You know, all animals do that. And but it is it is shaking off the the energy. It's just like we built up a lot of energies, but if what we do is we try to hold it in rather than just shaking it off. Can you twerk it off? Yeah. <laughs> dancing dancing is really is a really really good way to. Um, move that energy and that's why you know there's a, a full there's a practice called um trauma-informed yoga which is mm. very specific of of um moving of movement to move the trauma through the body and a lot of there's you know stories of people who have healed very significant trauma by doing yoga not going to therapy and that's see that's the worst thing that we can do honestly is go to a therapist, sit in a chair, and talk about our trauma. All we're doing is is holding it into in our body. We're not doing anything with it. We're we're speaking it. We're talking about it, and that's and that's it. We're just all we're doing is telling the story over and over and over. And so you have to. It has to move out. And that's why things like EMDR is really effective. Is because it's what's the sensation in your body move this move it and you move that sensation out of your body yeah i agree with you because you know, i come from the 12-step communities and they tell the stories over and over and over and then they continue to say i'm an alcoholic over and and all you're doing is reminding reminding yourself <laughs> who you're not right <laughs> like, exactly like, and we we got to change the story. I, I totally agree with you. And I think um, light language. If I look at that, and I, this is just my how I'm looking at it right now. Um, light meaning awareness, helping change the story with the awareness, and and that awareness kind of separates you from the mind and body. Um, and in in language, I love what Joe Dispenza says. Um, our thoughts are the language of the brain or the mind in our our uh, emotions are the language of the body. So I need to speak a new language. Mm -hmm. um, and one thing I love about the 12-step community is they talk about speaking the language of the heart also. And I got to speak a new language, create a new narrative, change my perception, and, and uh, start speaking from the heart. And stop and really become aware of that inner critic. You know, I ain't going to call myself I'm an alcoholic or I'm not going to be dwelt. My, I am not just the past the experience that's not who i am that was just an experience for the evolution of my own consciousness mm -hmm. or soul journey but i'm not going to get trapped in that and continue to repeat that over and over because it's very unhealthy and the body mind and body doesn't know the difference and, and it can create a lot of damage later down the line health wise right. in my opinion right. yeah and spiritual growth mm -hmm. yep. yeah so i don't know i was just jibber jabbering but that's what came to mind right now when yeah you were talking. no that's that was good <laughs> That's interesting. Um, can you give us an example of a, like a short little quick session of what light language is to give 
anybody that's not familiar with it give us a, yeah. an idea? Um, do you have like a intention? How about help us? I mean, can you use it to find more purpose in life? Okay, so so it's what I'm going to do is I'm I'm just going to speak the frequency of um, of that is allowing yourself to come into um, what do you say purpose of life? Yeah, um, be, finding more purpose or maybe any. Um, can light language also help um, with like any trapped emotions or uh, or um, patterns within an individual? Okay, so so um, it's what I'll do is it'll be a uh, I'm going to do a light language activation to open up your um, up the channels of whatever it is that each individual's channels need to be opened up, and so. Um, that way you can receive whatever it is that you need to receive because with, with light language, I'll be like speaking it and you're going to experience it one way the other, another person's going to be experiencing it a different way. And there's even times where people hear it differently. Like it sounds different, even though I'm saying the same thing. And so, um, so it's really to just, I'm just going to call it just opening the, the wisdom codes within Generalizing okay. it. Yeah. Thank mm. you. Yeah. Um, so, so when you, when you listen to this, you can, I, I do move my hands a lot. I tend to have my eyes closed, but I do move my hands a lot. So you can watch that if you want. A lot of times you can feel the frequency of it anyway. So whenever you listen to, to light language is to allow your, it's something that bypasses the thinking mind. And so it's just going to go straight into your, um, your frequency system of your of your soul self of your spirit self and so just allow it to do whatever it needs to do uh, there isn't nobody's no one person's going to experience it the same way so just allow yourself to experience it however you experience it allow any information to come in that wants to come in um, just whatever it is that it needs to be for you under knowing that it's exactly what it needs to be for you. Okay. Okay. Pu'usha da'eshtakama'ina uko. Arakoshtaba aya nama ikoa ma ishaya. Du ushko oa nama eshtakin ma ikira shako oa ka aya daba eshtako. Shu u shu amai. Du shukua chabai u. Shokua Shabai na goma. The kuum is the kaba ayana maoko. Is the kaba a eco oa. Do goma ega ekaba ukuma is the kaya. Shaka in a mokoa is the kaiba ekoa. Doko oma ika eshtike ai. Doko oba iki ika daba uko ona eshtika ina mako oa ki. Doko o uko oa eshtama u. Do u shu u u shi. Dash nama okoa ishta shenamaki dokuma a. Mm. Wow, that was Me beautiful. Too. Thank you. <sighs> How do you feel? Do you feel like after you, you do that? 
Um, I often feel, well, right now, I'm kind of like, okay, this is complete. <laughs> you know, it's, it feels complete. It's like a, um, feels clear. Can light language be translated? Um, into words so, or... I'm sorry, what? You know, can it be translated like into words or concepts or something? So, uh, yes, and it's not necessary because again, it gets it, again it gets more into the story of it, the story about it, rather than allowing it to to be. It's it's truly meant to bypass that human thinking experience. And to just allow it to be, um, allow it to express itself in frequency form in your system to to unlock what it needs to unlock. Mm. Um, so, like different people that I've heard, you know, that are like. Tra aren't really they're not really like translating it they're kind of giving an idea of what's what their experience is as it's going along if that makes sense it's like you know so they're like um you know this is or th there might be saying this is what i'm doing or this is the information that that i'm getting but really it's their experience and so that's why i tend to not because it's because I don't need to project my experience onto you. It's you get to have your own experience. Yeah, thank you. So bringing it all to a first full circle, what would you say, what's the purpose of light language for each of us? It's in a general to, sense. It's to fully connect you with your frequency self so that you can it's really so that you get to know who you are and and um how to show up and just be in on this on this earth in this moment yeah thank you thanks for coming on i really enjoyed having you on and just learning from you so i look forward to re-watching this thank you i'm gonna end it with a quote from Susie Kasem. And she says, the language of light can only be decoded by the heart. So yeah. I appreciate you uh, coming on and helping us with that. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Namastizzle. <laughs> the snow we out here. No, we out here working in a major way. Had to speak on it just to make a break. Any given something that we make away. Time to level up on the day to day. No, we out here working for the greater good. Expand your mind, broaden your lens the way you should. From the stars to the galaxy to speak on spirituality. I understand for the neighborhood.